It was beautiful. Fish everywhere. There's so many fish. Like at some point there was more fish in water surrounded by all those small little fish. We didn't see a lot of big ones. We saw a couple or a few. But yeah, the, the colors were amazing and then everything was so, so good and not too deep. Happy we did all that lighthouse and we've been all around it. So we didn't miss anything. But it was beautiful. In the last episode, we were reaching Bendanera, where we had to use the Mediterranean mooring technique to anchor the boat. If you missed it, make sure to catch up here and don't forget to subscribe. Getting ready? Yeah, getting ready. I'm gonna go for a snorkel. Whereabouts? So we're gonna go next to the lava flow, so next to the entrance. There's a lighthouse and apparently it's not too deep. I mean, not too deep. It's like over 10 meters, but less than 20. I'm gonna give it a go and yeah, let's, let's see. It was beautiful. Fish everywhere. There's so many fish. Like at some point there was more fish in water surrounded by all those small little fish. We didn't see a lot of big ones. We saw a couple or a few, but yeah, the, the colors were amazing and then everything was so, so good and not too deep. Happy we did all that lighthouse and we've been all around it. So we didn't miss anything, but it was beautiful. Yeah, what an amazing dive. Only downside is we can see plastic in the water, which I just can't ignore. So I ended the session with a few plastic bags around my belt. Anyways, before we dwell into the captivating history of Ben Danera, we have a bit of an issue to sort out. Remember during the crossing, we noticed the carpet was wet and we had to check if we were not sinking? Well, we still have to find out why. And our investigation started in Jewel before our Eureka moment arriving in Benda. We still have a lot of water here. Well, not a lot, but I mean, too much. <laughs> yeah, it's still water, so that's too much. I don't know where it's coming from. Maybe we should try if it's salty or not, so we know if it's coming from the outside. Mm, good idea. Yeah, it's salty. Definitely coming from outside. Not a good sign. No, so we can rule off our own water system. It's not fresh water. So all of these blue pipes 
snob them but i think i would have preferred having a leak on our water system because then you just change the pipe and that's it if it's salt water it means that it's coming from outside so <laughs> there's a hole in the boat maybe not a hole but somehow there's water coming in we can't find out where it's coming from so we removed the carpet and we've looked everywhere we still can't find anything i think the issue is the water is only coming in when we are sailing that's my guess i don't know so because today we are sailing again we're gonna go to Bendanera. We have removed the carpet completely and I'm gonna try something. So I'm gonna put some tissues in different spots and see which one gets wet first. At least it will give us an idea of where it's coming from and then we can investigate the area a bit further. Having water coming into your boat is never a good thing so... let's try to do something about it. Eventually, while on the way, we have a lead. Okay, this one is super wet. <laughs> Not the others. Um, not the pipes. So... Yeah. Okay, so after a bit of investigation, we think it's coming from that blue pipe. So not actually from the pipe itself, but it's just running along the pipe. And because this is the point where it's at it, its lowest, that's why the water drops here. So in order to know, I'm just going to move this here and this should get wet first now. If that's the case, then we just need to follow that pipe and see where the water is coming from. Back to the present. I think we have cracked the code. That's it, we have solved the issue. So all we needed to do is follow that blue pipe because we know the water isn't coming from the pipe itself, but it's coming along the pipe. We followed it in the bathroom and basically a lot of water is coming through this hole, which is a pre-existing hole in the boat. So we don't have a hole in the boat. So let's go to the other side of this hole in the cockpit. So yeah, I think it's just that the silicon around that pipe that's uh, holding the electrical cable is probably worn off. And we never really noticed because in Australia, we don't tend to get the waves on this side. So all we need to do is put a bit of silicon back around and that should solve the problem. Okay, now let's talk about Bendanera. It is part of the volcanic group of island of Benda, historically known as the sole source of nutmeg and maize in the world. The traders were very secretive about the location due to the exorbitant selling price of the spices. The Portuguese arrived first to start trading and later failed to establish control. Dutch traders succeeded in forming trading relations and then convinced the Bendanese to grant them monopoly on spy purchases. They also eventually built a fort on Nera Island but faced resistance when the Bendanese killed Dutch visitors. Dutch retaliation occurred in the form of a genocide. 1,000 Bendanese likely survived in the island and they were spread throughout the nutmeg plantations as slaves. This marked the beginning of over-Dutch colonial control in Indonesia. Run Island was still under British control, but the Dutch traded it in exchange for Manhattan. As it was further away and difficult to control, all the plantations were destroyed. Later, the British briefly took control of the Benda Islands, which was enough for them to uproot and transport nutmeg trees to their colonies in Ceylon and Singapore. The competition pretty much destroyed the value of the Benda Island to the Dutch, but they continued to rule the islands until 9 1949. So today we're gonna do the spice tour. We are a group of like 10 people, so all the boats around. So if you look around, we are all tied up and we're all going to the spice tour. And yeah, I didn't ask much because yeah, I wanna get surprised. Um, looking forward to it. Not sure I like this greeting committee. Anyways, this is all right for today because we are going to the biggest island of the group called Benda Besar, Besar meaning big. Welcome to Benda Besar. We are mostly here to discover the treasure of this island, the spices. But the real treasure for us is the people. Hello! Hello! Hello. 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 Hello.
guess we have some climbing to do. First up on the island tour, the wells. It's very clean water and this small one for drinking and the other ones bigger for washing. Every day, they start every morning and afternoon, the people come here, it's the carry, carry water. It's a very important for the water also. This is the holy water, cleaning the feet and clean the hand and you can pray here. One year ago, the group from the Jakarta come here. If the couple is married, they don't have a children. Come here and you know, come back again to Jakarta and call me, it's my wife is pregnant. Rest assured, this is not what we've asked for. And after that, we are going to the gardens or plantations. It's for the pickup, the nutmeg, to have this gum. Use the implement like this. Mm -hmm. Easy to refine because we just sitting in the brass, we climb the tree, sitting in the brass, uh, standing in the brass, and we pick up the nutmeg. Mm -hmm. Like this. Yeah. And because a demo is better than words, here is how they use this tool for harvesting, which happens three times a year, three months on, one month off. What you mostly know of the nutmeg spice comes from the seed. During the Dutch monopoly, the seeds were dipped in lime before being sold to prevent their sprouting and avoid transplantation. <laughs> the fruit of the nutmeg tree resemble an apricot. The pulp is eaten locally and the mace and nutmeg are dried before being used. And this is the meats, meats, yeah. You know this are uh, very expensive than this. In Bandanera for a kilo, 300,000 rupiah for a kilo. Wow. And this for a kilo, 190,000 rupiah. Two consumes here, you know it's a, a Coca-Cola, Sprite, oh. Parfum, Medicine, yeah, and Sampo, and Nutmeg Oil. Okay. Yeah, and this one also, and the sample and medicine, and the nutmeg oil. And this one is using about the nutmeg candy, nutmeg jam, mm. nutmeg syrup, mm. and nutmeg oil. We use the skin, the but skin. if we grow, we must wait for three year, three year or four year. Uh, but if we want to make, or we want to sell in the market, we get it grow again. Okay. Uh, sometime from the flower, but it, it is young. We, wa we must wait for like this. Yeah. If you want to need the skin, you must make bar. But you want to make you you must do like this. You must I mean you must be patient because walk so We got to try a bit of the bark, which once dry will make the cinnamon stick as you know them. Thank you. Thank you. Can you really taste it? But they also use the leaves to make tea apparently. It's a bowl on the water, yeah, and then uh, after you want to drink water, it's maybe good for healthy. It's very nice. Yeah. The local people maybe it's the to consume to cinnamon bowl. You know, it's the you know the Corona. Corona is uh, the COVID-19. The bandan is not Corona. <laughs> no. Because the, the tree. because the natural, yeah, the natural, yeah, medicine of natural. Yeah. So those are 300 or 400 years old almond trees. 
and they're actually used for protection for the nutmeg trees to get shade. So that's why we've got almond and nutmeg in the same spot. In the morning go to the forest and looking for the almond. You're using a body here, it's a very easy. Yeah? Make a cut here. It's a very nice almond salt and a cream. It's a very, very delicious puzzle. Yeah? Very much like the nutmeg, the almond comes from a fruit that will split open once ripe. The pit will fall off and inside you can find the almonds. After the discovery, it is time to try all of those spices. So nothing better than a mid-morning snack. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so good. What are you having? Cinnamon tea. Oh yeah. It's delicious. And then nutmeg coffee. Mm. Show the color. Mm, this is good. And the cake is just amazing. Looks like a pancake. There's coconut inside and then probably nutmeg, cinnamon, all of the things that they grow here. It's really good. It is. Unfortunately, that's the other side of Indonesia. But you don't see that often. Our exploration continued into the discovery of Fort Hollandia, or what's left of it. Where's my drone footage? So no fly zone. Everywhere? Yeah, all around the island. Because there's an airport right in the middle. Even though there's probably one flight per week, <laughs> can't fly the drone. So. Done it. Yeah. Ready to go back? Yep. And this concludes our spice tour on the Banda Islands. But rest assured, these islands hold countless more treasures waiting to be explored. From the fascinating people whose diverse heritage is deeply intertwined with history, to the vibrant lush jungles and the mesmerizing underwater world, there will be no shortage for excitement here. Join us next time as we continue our adventure on Bandanera. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and drop us a like. See you next time. Bye!